Welcome to this tutorial we are doing on the anatomy of skeletal muscle. But we've already covered the gross anatomy in one of the previous videos, so this time we are going to take a look deeper and microscopically. So just a quick recap. If we have a bone here, our muscle was going to come off the bone through a tendon into the belly or body of the muscle which is then going to be uh, subdivided even further into fascicles, which is then once again subdivided further from that into individual muscle fibers. And that's where we're up to here. So we have the muscle fiber right here, or the muscle cell, the individual muscle cells. And once we're within that muscle cell, we're going to see a new structure called myofibrils, which we briefly mentioned in the last video. So we've got the myofibril here, and that's going to be a component of the muscle cell or muscle fiber. Now that we're at this point, let's have a bit more of a conversation about what we've got going on within these muscle cells. So if we remember the last uh, or deepest connective tissue sheath that we had covering those individual muscle cells was the endomesium, so the deepest connective tissue sheath. But underneath that we have something called the sarcolemma. Now the sarcolemma is just the name that we give to the plasma membrane of skeletal muscle cells themselves. So sarcolemma and it's a muscle fiber plasma membrane. So it's going to be underneath our endomesium. And in the last video we'd already discussed that these muscle fibers have multiple nuclei and the nuclei of a muscle fiber is going to be directly below the sarcolemma. So on the outer edge or outer surface of these cells. So you can see one here and here. And we can also see another nucleus over here. So we have many nuclei within muscle fibers and they're directly lying underneath our sarcolemma. And if you're wondering why the nuclei are on the uh, outer surface like this, it's because the central area we can see is completely packed with those myofibrils, which are the contractile elements of our skeletal muscle. Now another reason we have those many nuclei is because when we are creating skeletal muscle cells or fibers, many or up to a hundred or hundreds of embryonic cells will fuse together to form a skeletal muscle fiber. And if we have a look just here and pretend this is a whole uh, muscle cell for a moment, it can be up to 30 centimeters long, which for a cell is absolutely gigantic. So now that we know how and why our fibers have many nuclei, let's move down into the actual cell itself and talk a bit about what we are going to see. And the first thing we are going to see within the muscle cell is the sarcoplasm, which is what we call the cytoplasm of a skeletal muscle cell. And we already know a, a cytoplasm is just a thick, a soup-like solution that all the intracellular contents are floating around in, right? So why do we have to give it a special name for the skeletal muscle? Well, it's because we are going to be carrying an abundance of a few different things that our muscle requires. The first of which being glycosomes. Now a glycosome is a small membrane enclosed organelle that contains lots of glycogen and also glycolytic enzymes ready to turn that glycogen into glucose when our muscles need the energy. And the next component we're going to see in abundance within the muscle cells is myoglobin. Myoglobin being an oxygen binding protein within the cells that are similar to the hemoglobin in our red blood cells. And just like oxygenated heme in our red blood cells will give it its red color, oxygenated heme within our myoglobin will give muscles their red appearance as well. So next time you buy a piece of uh, fresh meat that's bright red, you can say, mmm, look at all that myoglobin. And the last thing we're going to find within that sarcoplasm in huge abundance that's painfully obvious is our 
myofibrils. So tons and tons of tightly packed myofibrils. And we have an individual myofibril there within the cell and also one down here. So I'll just point out they're both myofibrils and in the bottom one we're a bit more zoomed in so we can see what's going on a bit closer. Also I'll just point out here as well in red here we have uh, mitochondria and other organelles within the cell and because these myofibrils are so tightly packed the organelles or the other organelles within the cell are just squished up uh, in between them and against the sides so there's not too much room. And just in saying that the myofibrils themselves can take up up to 80% of the cell volume, the entire cell volume. So they're the contractile elements and they're what's going to be doing the work within the cell. And before we get too lost in talking about all the different individual parts of a myofibril, let's quickly note down the rest of the intracellular features that we're going to see. We have two more that I want to point out quickly, and they are the intracellular tubules that are going to surround our fibrils, our individual fibrils. So our first one is called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now the sarcoplasmic reticulum will show up here on a fibril. So all of that blue there is an individual sarcoplasmic reticulum and it's a uh, modified version of our smooth endoplasmic reticulum that we'll find within a uh, normal cell. And within a skeletal muscle cell, its main job is to be uh, regulating intracellular calcium. So it regulates intracellular calcium. And the last feature we're going to talk about, again another tubule, is called the T tubules. Now the T tubules I'll just show up in a, a brighter color so we can see them in between the uh, end portions of the sarcoplasmic reticulum here. So these are T tubules and T tubules are very special in the fact that they are continuous with our sarcolemma. The sarcolemma being the plasma membrane of our muscle fiber and why would we need something uh, that's within our cell continuous with our plasma membrane or continuous with our sarcolemma I've just outlined again here. Why would we need that? It's to massively increase the surface area. So our plasma membrane or sarcolemma is going to be forming these T tubules all the way down into the deepest points of those myofibrils within the cell and it's going to help conduct contractions. So it will help conduct contractions deep within the cell. And I'll just show why that's going to happen here. So if we have this plasma membrane going all the way around our cell, so the sarcolemma is going all the way around the cell, and a nerve impulse is going to be sent through the sarcolemma, if we have the T tubules going down into the middle here, we can get a impulse to the middle of the muscle or to the deepest segments of the muscle fibers very close to the same time that we can get it to the myofibrils that are right near the surface of the cell or right near the sarcolemma itself. The T tubules let that action potential or that nerve impulse rush down into the deepest segments of the fiber so that the whole muscle or the whole grouping of myofibrils within that muscle cell can contract all at once. And the last thing I'll point out quickly here on this individual myofibril itself is all of these are squiggly and straight lines and lines going in the horizontal and vertical directions on this myofibril that we can see here. They're all part of an individual contractile unit of that myofibril called the sarcomere. Now the sarcomeres are going to be running all the way along the myofibrils. So there's going to be heaps of them along a singular myofibril. And we're going to have to talk together about what exactly they look like and what they're made of. And then we'll talk about how we actually get the muscles to contract. Now I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.